Hi, I'm Brian from Atomic Motor and I'm here to do a review of the Climb Cryos Helmet for Adventure Touring. Now this helmet has a lot of really neat features. It's gotten a lot of buzz. We've been out actually riding in one. We've got the full story on it. Time to get started. Okay, first let's start with the basics of the Cryos helmet. Now this helmet retails for $549.95 as of the filming of this video, and it comes in five colors, matte black, matte white, and three versions of graphics. All of those are the same price, meaning there is no premium, like some other helmet brands charge, for the graphic versions. It comes in sizes small through 3XL, and um, the helmet weighs 3.3 pounds for this size large on our bomber scale. When you get the Climb Cryos helmet, it comes with a few extra things. It doesn't come with a fancy helmet bag, just a sack, but it does come with a spare tinted face shield. And both the, the stock face shield and the spare tinted one have pin lock uh, uh, capability, and it comes with a no fog pin lock insert. In addition to that, it has side pods that you can use so you can run the helmet without this top visor. All in all, it's a pretty comprehensive package for $550. All right, let's dive into the construction of the Cryos, and there's a lot to talk about. Now, first of all, this is a full carbon fiber helmet. That's one of the ways that Climb has achieved that very low weight. It is an adventure touring or a dual sport helmet, which means it has a projected front chin bar. That's nice when you're riding off-road and it's kind of hot. It doesn't trap as much heat as close to your, uh, your face and as close to the shield of fog as, as um, a street helmet will. Uh, you can run it. You can run this helmet with the visor and the face shield. You can run it with the visor and without the face shield. You can run it with the face shield and without the visor in street mode. There are two pods that go over the side of, uh, of the helmet. When you run it without the uh, face shield, it is possible to fit a set of motorcycle, motor, excuse me, off-road goggles in there uh, very easy. And the eye port opening is quite large. Again, the eye port opening is quite big, so that's pretty easy to do. I'm going to flip it around to, to look at the interior a little bit. I pulled the cheek pad out because, frankly, doing that is a little bit of a wrestling match. One of the things that's cool, though, about the interior of the helmet is, um, you know, we're not big fans of Velcro, and this uses Velcro to attach itself to the inside of the helmet. But this is one instance where Velcro is pretty good because if you've ever tried to snap an internal liner inside of the helmet, getting those to align is a real pain. And this comes out quite a bit more easily. The facing fabric on it is really nice and feels quite good. In fact, the overall liner itself uh, feels pretty good. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, uh, speaking to the density of the, the um, helmet. There is a pocket inside the helmet, uh, inside the liner here, where you can either attach your own communication system or the helmet is designed to, to accept a, an aftermarket extra Senna system that you can purchase directly from Climb is configured for this helmet. Or you can actually purchase the helmet with the Senna system installed all as one package. Uh, the helmet has a lot of depth to it. It sits pretty low on your head. That's a really good thing. Uh, a couple of more details. You can see here on the side, these screws on the visor uh, aren't really a traditional screw. It's actually a quick release system. And I'm going to try and do it without embarrassing myself on film here on video. But it's pretty easy. Just pop that open and that comes off. And then getting it back in is a little bit of a two-step process. You actually have to insert it here into the the shield and then very carefully work it back into place and then close it like so. And so that's a really nice feature. You don't need any tools. Uh, it's got a combination active and passive vent system, a really large vent here in the chin bar and that is not closable. It does have a chin curtain on the bottom which is removable. This one is particularly in, at this point is installed. Uh, and then it has an active vent here that you open and close with a nice positive feel. Uh, up is the position um, where it is open and that is uh, very easy to feel if you have gloves on. It's got a good system of venting on the back of the helmet and um, a nice airflow through in particular on the top of the helmet. There is quite a bit of um, channeling here on top of the helmet. It actually has a little cloth insert here in the top that acts as a filter. So it's not possible to actually feel the vent channels, but let me tell you, they are probably about that long and very, very deep. There is a huge amount of venting inside of this helmet. It's really designed to flow a ton of air. Uh, as far as other details about the construction of the helmet, it's fairly good looking. We actually like the styling of it quite a bit. 
It has a pretty normal profile. I have this Arai XD4 here and I have some still shots which will drop in, but I also want to show you that this is a very compact helmet and the, um, the Cryos is a little bit more of a traditionally sized helmet. So that's the rundown on the construction. Let's talk about how it works out on the bike. The first thing is the Cryos has a couple of um, overwhelming impressions that it gives you. One of them is that it is extraordinarily light. Uh, and it actually isn't super light on scale. 3.3 pounds is not unusual. But for some reason, when you have this helmet in your hands, when you're carrying it around, when you have it on your head, it feels extraordinarily light, much, much lighter than it actually is. And that is um, refreshing because, quite frankly, this XD4, which is a beautiful piece of equipment, feels the opposite. It actually feels heavier than it is. This is 3.6 pounds, feels like four. This is 3.3 pounds, feels like three. The second thing that the Cryos does uh, that's really important uh, is it's quiet. Now the X-D4, um, surprisingly, is a pretty loud helmet for a few reasons. Uh, one, the visor on the X-D4 doesn't have a top attachment point, and so it actually can flutter and buzz. You'll hear people talking about that. It actually can vibrate and make a noise. You don't really have that with the Cryos. There's a lot more scalloping on the visor, and so um, in addition to the noise that this generates, when you turn your head from side to side, this one has more pull. The Cryos is actually quite a bit more stable, less fatiguing on the neck. Um, that quiet um, feeling is probably due, you know, surprisingly to a uh, clever design on the shell, because there's a lot going on in the exterior of the helmet. This one's fairly smooth and doesn't have a lot going on, and this does, but it's still much, much quieter. There is no comparison. The third overarching thing that you'll know about, uh, notice about the Cryos is that it, it vents very, very well. And that is our single biggest complaint about the X-D4. For a few reasons, mostly because the uh, chin bar doesn't project very much, this helmet is hot. And it's almost too hot to use off-road. Uh, Cryos has a huge amount of venting. It has a much, much bigger eye port opening. It has a much, much bigger vent in the chin bar. Somehow, with all of those things, it still manages to be really quiet and it flows a lot more air. And so what those three things do, um, the, the lightweight, the stability, the additional venting, and the low noise, they make this a lot more versatile. This is, um, this is a bridge that no other helmet in the Adventure Touring category that we have found has crossed. In the past, we've said the XD4 is great for guys on big adventure bikes that are doing a lot of road use. And then we also have the Bell MX-9, which we've recommended for guys that are on smaller dual sport bikes that are doing a mix of uh, dirt and light street. The Cryos actually bridges that. It works well off-road, and then it actually works quite well on the road. Um, the helmet just has a really, really nice feel about it. Now, as usual, um, if you have a keen eye and, and you've looked at a lot of products as I have, you can pick things about, uh, about everything that, that you don't like. Every product has its positives and its negatives. And now the Cryos does have a few negatives. Um, somehow they managed to still play to its favor, but one of the, the negatives about it is that the density of the foam on the interior liner um, it's kind of soft. It doesn't have that high quality feel that this helmet gives. Now the density of the foam being a little bit on the soft side um, means it's going to pack out and it's probably going to get a little bit loose a little quicker than, than, um, than, than we would like it to. We had one customer that's had one for a while. He came in and I grabbed it and I squeezed the foam and boy it, it definitely lost some compression. And, I would, I would expect, if you're looking at the Cryos, I would, I would build in the idea that you're probably going to need to get a thicker cheek pad at some point. But the other thing that this does is it's pretty clever. It gives it a really nice showroom feel, really good when the helmet is new because it's so soft. Uh, there's not a lot of pressure points on the helmet, so it feels quite good. And unless you're being really critical, you may not notice that it has a little bit of a softer density. Uh, we think that this is great for um, all kinds of riders, people that are more discerning, that are doing off-road stuff, uh, that wear glasses or want to be able to wear goggles, uh, maybe on a KTM 690. It also performs very well on 
BMW GSs, both 800s and uh, 1200s, KTM, uh, you know, 950, 990, 1090, 1190, 1290 series, uh, both on and off the road, and just about every other big adventure bike and, and every other small dual sport bike. Again, I, I want to keep emphasizing that to, to death, but, but we do think that this has a great amount of versatility. Uh, Krauss is definitely a winner, and this is probably time for me to wrap up this video uh, with that, uh, that summary. Uh, we are Atomic Moto at www.atomic-moto.com, home of the bombers. We are mission-focused on finding great gear and getting it to you, matching it to you, for you, your bike, your riding, and in some cases where you live. So thanks for tuning in, and we hope you check out the Cryos. See you later.